but it seems to me that, as I said, that you entered, re-entered the, the mainstream of, of, of the business that you were in, the, the film career. When you did Superman 1 in the sort of late 70s, I wonder how much of, of you accepting that part was, was due to the fact that Marlon Brando was, was in the movie. I hadn't exactly retired, but things had sort of stopped for me at the end of the 60s, you know. I had stopped getting first division offers, you know, and I was spoiled. I didn't want to go straight down to third division. So I just took off and I did other things. And then I was, I was actually in um, India when I had this telegram arrive saying, would I come back to London and meet uh, Dick Donner about this movie and uh, that Brando was going to be in. And that was just irresistible, you know, to be in a film with Marlon. It was, uh, Why? Well, because he... I mean, two actors of my generation. There were there were there were Brando and, and there was Dean. You know, they mm. were the two idols. And and Dean was no longer with us, but Brando was still around. So the idea of you know getting up on film with him, albeit brief, was just uh, irresistible. Was it a letdown working with him, or did it reach expectations? Well, it wasn't a letdown. He he was very different to anything that I'd imagined. He was, well, he's hysterically funny for, a, for one thing. And he really doesn't, um, he really doesn't learn the lines, you know. He hasn't kind of written, he hasn't written up big behind the lights, you know, so you can't really see his reading. And in the scene that I did with him, he was, um, I was, you know, you're waiting to do the scene, and I saw him, he had a little bit of paper, and he was, Gents, uh, you're a really disgusting example of a crypton. And, uh, uh, and what he was trying to do, he was trying to learn the first line <laughs> so that as he turned towards me, he could be speaking before he had it written down. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> he was just trying to learn this one line so it looked natural. Mm. I just couldn't believe it, you know, and, and I, and I, so I went up to him, I said, Marlon, you know, what are you doing? So I'm trying to learn this line, you know, before, uh, and I said, but how are you going to play Lear and Macbeth, you know, if you can't learn a line, you know, and he said, I've learned them already. <laughs> just not a moment's pause, you know. What was the best advice you've been, looking back on your career, you've, been, you've ever been offered by another actor yourself about your craft? Um, very early on, I, I, was, I was actually sort of trying to prepare myself to go to drama school. So I was making that transition from being a non-theatrical person to a theatrical person. And, and uh, so even meeting, you know, seeing another actor was, was a big thrill. And, and one morning on the on the underground I found myself sitting opposite an actor called Wilfred Lawson. Oh yes. Wonderful all that. For actors, I mean Wilfred Lawson was the the great actor. You know, he was the bar none. He was just the, the the mesmerizing guy. And I was just so fascinated by him and, and he was and he was a great drinker as well. <laughs> Wilfred was sort of looking at me and I was looking at Wilfred and he was smiling. <laughs> and and um, finally, I I summoned up, you know, frightened that he'd get off the train. I said to him, "Excuse me, sir. You know, I'm trying to be an actor. And uh, <clears throat> is there any advice you could give me? Is there any advice you'd give me about acting?" You know? And and I said, "Well, what do you do?" And he said, I learn the word is. <laughs> learn the word is. Yeah. And at the time, it, it, I was just mystified by that. But in fact, as I got older and as I got deeper into the business, it was a very considerable piece of advice because, in truth, if if you do just that, um, when you get out there, something happens. What's, what's curious and interesting about about your career is what Claude O'Leary.